So now let's solve a past paper example regarding the periodic table and elements in the periodic table and some of the trends. Well, this question is usually given with a paper that you don't have a periodic table with. So imagine solving this question without a periodic table. So let's get started. The question says here, a diagram shows a section of the periodic table and the symbols for the first 20 elements. So this is kind of a keyword. So he gave you here a periodic table but without numbers, only the symbols for the elements. So we can know the atomic number of each. So we start with hydrogen, that's one, helium two, lithium three, then beryllium 4, then so on, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on and so forth. You keep on doing this, and you have your 20 elements. And we said before in previous videos regarding electronic configuration and the periodic table that the atomic number is the number of electrons that the element has. Now let's move on to the question, the real question. It says here, what's the name given to the row of elements such as sodium to argon? So for example this, what do we call this? This is called a period. Now let's see the second question. It says, name two metals in the row from sodium to argon. Well, we said in previous videos, in periodic table videos, that metals exist on the left hand side. So this is the left hand side of the table, this is the right hand side of the table, and metals are usually in the left hand side. So we only have sodium and magnesium, which are an A and Mg. Now, he doesn't expect you to write the symbols, he expects you to write in words. That's why he said name. Then he says, which is the least reactive element in the row from sodium to argon and explain. So this row, we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon. He says, which is the least reactive element? Well, in previous videos, we said that noble gases are the least reactive elements found in the periodic table. So, the only noble gas you have in this row is argon. And why is that? We explained that noble gases have a complete outermost shell. So, they don't lose electrons or gain electrons. So that's your answer. Now let's move on to another question. He says, state in terms of electronic configuration why elements in the column. So he says now column. From lithium to potassium, why do they have the same chemical properties? Let's go back. So we see here. This is the column he's talking about. And we said a column is also known as a group. So he's talking about group 1 metals. So this is a group 1 metals. And he says that why do they have chemical properties? And he specifically asked you to do that in terms of electronic configuration. So let's take lithium for example. Lithium is number 3 and he said that it has two electrons in the first layer, one electron in the outermost layer. For example, sodium. Sodium is number 11 and it has an electronic configuration of 2, 8 and 1. You see here, both of them have a one electron in their outermost shell. So, therefore, because these elements have the same number of electrons in the outer motion. 
Now let's move on to another question. He says, which element has an atomic number of six? See, this is why we we numbered the elements in the first place. So number six, where is number six? Carbon is number six. So you go back and you write carbon. So carbon and its symbol is C. Now he asks you finally, which element has an electronic configuration of 268? So how do you know that? Add up these. So 2 plus 8 plus 6 gives you 16. So the element number 16 is the element he asks, is asking you about. So where is 16? That's sulfur. And you go back and write sulfur. And that's that. You're done with the question and you will get an A star. An A star. If you watched the previ previous videos regarding the periodic table and electronic configuration, you will be masters at this. So keep on practicing and good luck.